Lord, you have not brought us this far to leave us. We thank you for your sustaining grace and your favor towards us. We come now, Lord, to stand in that place where John stood, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, stand with us. Let your word be relevant to the needs of the people. In some way, Lord, touch each soul, each heart. Lord, that set a man, woman, boy, or girl that don't know you today, help them, Lord, to find new life and new meaning through your Son, Jesus Christ. We shall ever praise thy name. It is in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to thank all of you who have kept me in your prayers. The Bible tells us that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Certainly today I can not only feel a difference, but I know that there is a difference. That God moving by his power divine. We sing the song sometimes, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I'm a firm believer that there's nobody that can do us like Jesus. In the gospel, according to the writing of St. Luke, chapter 21, want to reread the first four verses of the chapter. And he, referring to Jesus, looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury has cast in all the living that she had. I want to speak on the subject today, give God your best. Give God your best. I've used this subject before in other places, but with other texts. The Lord so happened to place the subject on my heart in reference to this text today, dealing with the widow and her two mites want to point out to us through the sermon today that the story of the widow's might is used as an illustration to answer man's question about giving to the work of God and meeting the desperate needs of a world hurting, full of a suffering humanity. For many people, giving to the church and to charity is a thorn in the side. Why? Because oftentimes we're guilty of not giving God our best as well as giving our best to charitable causes. When you think about it and truly think about it, most people who give to charitable causes, particularly material items, don't give their best. They give something that they've set aside, that's been setting in the closet for a few months or a few years, something that they no longer have a desire to utilize anymore. In some instances, the items, they're not even sure whether or not the items work. 
but they will give them because there's been a clarion call to give something. I've heard over the years people complain about the church. Not only do they complain about the church, but they complain about the preacher. They complain about church officers. Some say going to church would be all right if the preacher didn't spend so much time talking about money. Others have said every time I go to church, there's always a need for money. Money this, money that, money, money, money. I discovered that there's probably a high degree of accuracy in those statements. But I want to suggest to us that the church would not be in need if every born again member would do his or her full obligation when it comes to supporting the church with his or her ties and offerings. Structure of the temple. 
The temple in that day had many points of entrance. One could enter from the east, west, north, south, and then there were points in between. And once you entered the temple, you had a designated place that you would be seated in the temple. They had various courts because certain people sat in various sections of the courts. As a matter of fact, as Jesus sat down, imagine Jesus. He moves from one section of the temple into another section of the temple. This section, known as the Court of Women, contained all of the offering or collection boxes. Note this, there were more than one collection box. As a matter of fact, biblical scholars suggest that there were 13 boxes in the temple. And at the appropriate time, men and women, as they went into the various courts of the temple, could give according to the need or according to the ministry that they desire to support. These boxes were like trumpet-shaped collection boxes. And so Jesus, he sat down, he was tired, his elbows upon his knees and with his face and head resting in the palms of his hands, sitting there with his eyes closed and resting, Jesus heard the clanging of money being dropped into the collection boxes. Notice what verse 1 of the text says. As Jesus heard the money clanging, obviously in most instances coins, Jesus looked up. And when he looked up and noticed what was going on, Jesus decided to pay attention to the stewardship effort of those who claim to love his God and God's temple. Jesus Christ fixed his eyes upon the temple coffers and his treasury. Jesus was concerned not only about the welfare of the temple, but also the welfare of those who desire to offer God a sacrifice pleasing and acceptable to him. This illustration ought to suggest to us that Jesus' eyes are fixed upon us. That today he is observing our giving. Jesus wants to know if we're giving with a willing mind and heart or if we are giving grudgingly and reluctantly. We ought to know that if we have not given out of, out of grateful hearts and given willingly and cheerfully that God does not want our gifts. Bible cautions us that our Heavenly Father, who is in, who sees in secret, He sees everything we do and He knows the intents of our heart and that one day He will reward us openly according to our true intent. Therefore, we ought to learn to adhere to the scripture which says to us out of 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, every man or woman according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Yeah. Not grudgingly, not of necessity. For God, the Bible says, loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. Yeah. Question we must ask ourselves, are we willing are we giving largely and liberally in proportion to our blessings? Or do we give with an attitude of regret? You know, I, I don't like to receive gifts from people who remind you time and time again what they gave to you. All right. If you're going to give me something to have to remind me every week that you gave me something, you might as well keep that gift. Amen. Then it's obvious that you have more thunder. 
He's promised to prosper us Amen. if we would delight ourselves in him. The psalmist told us that this morning in Psalms 37, that if we delight ourselves in him, he shall give us the desires of the heart. Yes, sir. But then there is a greater question. The question <laughs> is, if you do not have financial gifts to give, have you given equally? the best of your service to the Lord. Amen. Sometimes you don't have money to give. Yeah. But you ought to ask yourself, when it's time for me to be at the door of the Lord, am I there? Am I willing to give of my service to the Lord? Yeah. Some of you are sitting down on gifts Three. that you can use in the service of the Lord. And you're not using those gifts. Yeah. And because you're not using those gifts, so that he can pour you out the blessings that you so desire. Oh, y'all pray with me today. I feel the help and I feel good. Preach. I am going to preach. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm going to take my time this morning. Amen. Because this is a message that God has given me for the church. We need to learn that if we are going to be blessed, yeah. that we have to show God through our giving that we desire to be blessed. You got your hand all closed and your fist all tight. How can God put something in your hand? Yeah, yes, sir. Some of us miss blessings all day long. I'm walking down the street. I see nickels and pennies and dimes. And every time I see one, I say, thank you, Lord. That's one more penny that I didn't have. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, I pick them up. Yeah. Yes, sir. But one and one equals what? And if you put two and two together, you get four. And if you keep adding and you keep calculating, God will bless you. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Don't pray with me this morning. Teach. Remember that Jesus looked up. What he saw must have been an impressive sight. It was the Passover week. It was. Two 
and she gave every cent of it. That's the way that we ought to be. Yes, and then third, we must realize that giving is to be sacrificial. Well, what do you mean, preacher? You see, the rich gave out of their abundance, but this woman gave out of the little that she had. Yes. You can have a whole lot to give, yes. but it's not sacrificial when it doesn't take anything out of you. This woman, when she gave her two months, she could have thought about her family at home. She could have thought about her starving children. She could have thought about her own need. But she gave to God because she knew that God would make a way out of no way. How many of you know that God will make a way out of no way? Amen. Then the fourth point. If you want to be a true giver, give God everything. Give God everything. You see, we can't selectively decide what we're going to give God. We just cannot, in our own way of thinking, all what we think, well, I'll give God this, and he'll be satisfied because this is more than what I gave you last week, and he understands. No, no, no. We need to learn that if we're going to give of ourselves and give of our means to God, that we have to give everything. Do you remember the rich young ruler? Jesus met one day, and the rich young ruler told the Lord, Lord, I've kept all of the commandments. I've done everything that you wanted me to do. And then when Jesus turned, turned around and told him, go sell all that you have and do what with it and give it to the poor. This rich young ruler, he walked away sorrowful.
nothing left. <laughs> but she had everything <laughs> because she gave with the right attitude. <laughs> this old lady, <laughs> she made a sacrifice. <laughs> and that's why I like the remedies of the song. <laughs> when the songwriter said, <laughs> if when you give <laughs> the best of your service, <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> 